Hi everyone, welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Do I have any dog lovers out there? That's what today's card is centering around. It's called the Happy Tales Bundle, and it's the stamp set with the coordinating dog punch. And here's the card we're gonna be creating today. But I've got a spin on this for you, for those of you that are cat lovers instead. Remember, if you're here visiting from YouTube, you'll be able to find a link down in the video description below, which will navigate you over to the pictures cutting dimensions and supplies. And if this is your first time and you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I sure would love to have you do so. Make sure you click the subscribe button down below and next to it, click the bell icon. That will give you notifications of when I'm here live on YouTube, as well as when I upload a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started. Here's a close up of the card we're gonna be creating today. Isn't this cute? And I've got so many tips about this punch and this card, so let's get started. I'm gonna begin with the dog house and I'm using a piece of real red cardstock. This is just a scrap. And I'm gonna be using my Memento ink and I have already pulled out the image of the dog house from the stamp set. And that comes from the Happy Tales. There is also an image here that fills that dog to give it more of a Dalmatian type of look. And of course the color possibilities are endless. You'll see the dog house images here. This image is meant to line up over this so that you don't have to color it in. But today I'm gonna to cheat. I'm gonna use colored cardstock. I'll go ahead and ink that up with the Memento ink and I'll stamp that here. It is photopolymer, so it's gonna be easy to see where you're going. While I have my ink pad out, I've reached for the small heart. This is the outline image. So I'll go ahead and ink that up as well and I'll stamp that here. In the stamp set, I want to point out to you that there's also a solid heart as well as the outline. These images can be used together with two different colors or, of course, independently. This heart is going to be able to be punched out from that dog punch. Isn't this awesome? I'll slide in my cardstock and I'll line that up. Here's a tip for you about the Stampin' Up! punches if you didn't know this. If you lightly squeeze the handle, it locks the cardstock in place so that you can line it and then you can just punch that right out. There is no punch or die for the dog house, so I'll just go ahead and use my scissors. This is a real simple image to cut out because all the lines are either straight or angled. The area in the center here for the opening of the dog house, I'm gonna cut out with my scissors. Now don't get too fussy about wanting to make it perfect. Just cut around those lines, just do the best that you can. I'm gonna push those images to the side and I'm gonna bring in a piece of designer series paper. This comes from the Tropical Escape Designer Series paper. The one thing I love about the Stampin' Up! Designer Series papers is that most of them are double-sided. Those with foil typically aren't. You'll notice that on one side you have a theme reminiscent to the name of the paper, and the other side is quite generic, making it very versatile for you to use on other projects. I'm gonna bring in my silicone craft sheet. I absolutely love this product because it'll keep my work surface sticky free, Adhesive hot glue and liquid glue will not stick to it. It will simply rub right off. So I've got a strip here. You're gonna notice that it's gonna be a lot longer than what I'm gonna need, and I'm gonna give you a tip about cutting. I've also got a piece of real red cardstock here, and I wanna create a small decorative edge on the card. So I'm gonna flip this over, and along the outside edge, I'm gonna place adhesive. Now, if you were going to do this on your regular work surface, you for sure would have adhesive all over your paper or your stamp table, which is one reason why I love the silicone craft sheet. Now, if you're like me and you have difficulty getting things straight, I wanna give you a tip. The silicone craft sheet is a bit opaque, so it'll allow you to see the lines underneath. So if you are using grid paper, or in my case, I have my wood grain work surface, I can line up my strip, I can bring my designer series paper right underneath it, and I can look horizontally to see if it's fairly straight. I find I have better luck with it going this way than when I try to do it vertically. And then I'll just press that in place. Now the excess here we're gonna talk about in just a minute. The next thing is a layer of Whisper White cardstock. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add that strip here to the edge. So I'm coming back to my silicone craft sheet and I'm gonna add adhesive to the back side. Here's that layer of Whisper White and I want my red to be on the outside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line that up where I want it here on my card. Now this time I'm gonna do vertically, but if you have better luck horizontally, by all means, turn your paper, and then I'll just press that in place. Now you can see we've got way more here than what we're gonna need. So here's a tip for you. 
I keep a pair of scissors in my stamp studio that I designate specifically for sticky projects. And I keep a small red ribbon here on the handle to designate them. It keeps me from gunking up my good ones. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over and using the cardstock as a guide, I'm gonna cut away the excess of what I don't need. By using that card base as a guide, you're ensured that you're gonna get a nice straight edge. While I'm here, I'm gonna go back to my ink pad and I'm gonna add my greeting. And I've chosen the greeting from the same stamp set. It says, a best friend leaves a paw print on your heart and I'll ink that up. Now you remember in the introduction that I said that if you are a cat lover that I have a tip for you. So make sure you hang with me. I've cut a layer of basic black cardstock and I'm going to adhere this one to the other. And I'm going to take my silicone craft sheet again to keep my work surface clean. And I'm going to add adhesive in my four corners. I absolutely love this nail adhesive because it is refillable and it is very inexpensive to refill. It's $4.50 and you're going to get 472 inches of adhesive in each refill. I'm looking to keep a small border of black all the way around. And then once I'm happy, I'll go ahead and press that in place. I've also cut a piece of Whisper White cardstock. This measures five and a half by eight and a half. I'm gonna have the cutting dimensions here in the link below. I've scored it in half just before you joined me. I'm gonna be using my bone folder to create that nice crisp edge. So I'm gonna line up my edges here and then I'll just run my bone folder along the crease. I'm gonna come back to my layer and I'm gonna add adhesive again to these four corners. And then I'll mount this here on the card base. Again, I'm gonna to look to leave a small border of color all the way around, and then I'll tack that down. The next thing is going to be that small heart that we punched out, and that is here. I'm gonna flip that over, and I'm gonna be using a mini dimensional. I'm gonna use my take your pick pickup tool to help me lift these, because these are fairly small. You can certainly use your finger, but I wanna show you how awesome this product is. Now it's new, so you will not find it in any of the current catalogs, but it is available in my online store, and of course there's a link down below. There is a putty tip on this side, which will allow you to pick up these small pieces. It also will help you to pick up sequins as well. It comes with a refill, and in addition to that, there are caps for this side, as well as this side. So you can see that I've just taken it off here. There's a lock and unlock mechanism here. So I'm gonna turn this and then slide this out. There's like a spatula here on the end and I love this and you can tell by looking at it, it's pretty gunked up. If I actually put a dimensional down where I didn't want it, I can get up underneath it very easily to loosen and then pull it up without destroying my card base. That can go back inside and then be locked. And the other side is a paper piercing tool, which also will help me pick up those smaller items like adhesive backed sequins and rhinestones and pearls and my mini dimensionals. It also comes with a dual sided stylus tool. For $10, you cannot beat this product. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna pick up one of my mini dimensionals and I'm gonna place that right here on the back of the heart. And I'll take off that paper backing, which will reveal the other sticky side. And I'm gonna place that heart right next to the word heart here in my greeting. Remember our dog house? Let's go ahead and adhere that. So I'm gonna flip that over. And again, with my silicone craft sheet, I can use my adhesive and not worry about it falling on my work surface. And I'm gonna choose to place this dog house, oh, probably about two thirds of the way down. And I am gonna overlap a little bit onto the designer series paper. The dog builder punch faces in one direction, but the great thing about using colored cardstock is that you're gonna be able to interchange the direction of that image. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this down inside and then I'm going to punch. So now I can choose whatever direction I want my dog in. Now you'll recall at the beginning that I promised to share with you an alternative. And that is this for those cat lovers out there. It is the Nine Lives stamp set. It has a coordinating cat punch, which I happen to have here. Again, the same thing, if you were to punch it out of cardstock, you'll be able to use a silhouette image in either direction. This exact same layout will work wonderfully with this stamp set. This product is in the Current Occasions catalog. Now, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you're interested in receiving a complimentary copy of the Occasions catalog and the annual catalog, please leave me a comment below. I would be more than happy to send them to you. And it's a great time to be shopping because there are a few days left in Stampin' Up's largest sale of the year called Celebration. For any $50 product purchase, you can choose a free product of your choice from these exclusive packages. For those of you with a larger wish list, there are even products available with a $100 purchase. 
I'm going to add a little bit of metallic thread in the area of his collars. I am using the silver metallic thread, and you might be looking at this little piece of blue tape here on the top, wondering what this is. This is actually poster putty or poster tack. Teachers often use it in their classrooms to hold up posters. It will not mar the surface and it's easy to use. So all I did was take a small amount. I find it holds the end of my metallic threads perfectly so I don't have a tangled mess with all the loose ends. I'm gonna be using a glue dot for this. So I've just flipped him over in the opposite direction and with my take your pick pickup tool again, I'm gonna add a glue dot here to the back of that dog collar. And then I'm gonna take the raw end of my metallic thread and I'm gonna lay that right here on top. I'm gonna to flip it over to the right side and then I'm gonna go around and around to create that faux collar. Now the great thing about the glue dot is there's plenty of glue dot there so I can tack down the other end as well. Now I'll come up here with my scissors and I'll just cut away what I don't need. And you can see metallic thread can be quite a bit to tame but with that poster tack or poster putty, it's gonna be super easy. So I've got the end of my thread here and I'm gonna bring that right on top. And then I'm gonna take that poster tack and I'm gonna press it right on top of that raw end. That's gonna make it really easy for me to find next time I use it. I'm gonna flip that over and I'm gonna reach for my full size dimensionals here. And I'll place one here at the top, one here near the center, and then a couple here. I'm gonna add a small one there from the mini dimensionals. I am very cognizant that my card is going to be going through the postage meter at the post office, which has rollers in it. And oftentimes, if your card is not well balanced with dimensionals, it can come out sagging on the other side. So I'm going to take off those paper backings, and then I'm going to position my dog here. Now I want the elevation to be slightly different than the dog house, so it looks proportional. To finish this off and give him a little bit of a look of a dog tag, I'm gonna be using my rhinestones. And once again, that take your pick pickup tool is a wonderful thing. There are glue dots already on the back, so I'll come up from behind it to lift that off and I'll place that here below that thread. Here's the card we created together today, the card I created before you joined me. If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, which is a like here on YouTube, and leave me a comment. I love to interact with those of you that watch. Head over to lisasstampstudio.com where you can purchase the supplies I've used today. And while you're there, click on rewards in the red menu button at the top and you'll see the exclusive rewards that I provide for my customers. While you're there, subscribe to my weekly e-newsletter where you'll receive a tutorial that's not shared on any of my other platforms. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.